Hello and welcome to Inside the Innovation with Andrew Lawrence, who is from Commerce Cloud Product Development. Andrew, what, what do you work on in Commerce Cloud? Sure. Uh, so I'm a director of product management for our uh, B2C commerce developer experience. So things related to APIs and sandboxes and, and tool sets and SDKs and basically all the things you use to develop on top of B2C commerce cloud uh, roll up to me in one way or another. So and you're responsible sort of broadly for the developer experience and, and making sure that if you're going to develop on commerce cloud, you've yep. got all this stuff in the world. Yep. So what did you guys create to, to create a center for people to go and learn about sort of what the APIs were and, and how to approach headless and frankly commerce development? Yeah, so I mean, it kind of started, uh, I would say probably the beginning of last year in 2019. Uh, we, we realized that the APIs that we had for the B2C commerce platform, while, while we've had APIs for a number of years, um, there were some issues with using them. They were built kind of, uh, call it, uh, after the fact of the, of the platform, and we needed to be more API centric in what we were doing. And so we started off on a path where we basically built or, or defined the APIs, what we wanted APIs to look like for the platform to be able to do the things that you need to, to build your storefronts and to manage your environments and those type of things. And we built out in a very API first manner, those, those signatures. And then we proceeded behind it to start to build a new API platform to be able to run those APIs, something that's that's separate from their current e-commerce stack, so that it can grow with us um, uh, as we as we continue to move forward. A, a lot of times, uh, what gets brought up also when you bring up the word headless, you bring up the word uh, microservices. People should they, you build the headless system so that you can talk to microservices on the other side. In B2C commerce. I mean, honestly, we don't we don't have a lot of microservices at this point, but we want to and we need to expand them. And we needed a new API layer to be able to start to do that. So we can start to explore, explore some of those microservices. And now, 18 months later, we have a number of them that are starting to go into beta. We will continue to have more and more microservice versions of the APIs that give us a lot more horizontal scalability and ultimately a lot more flexibility to the developer and what they're doing. Totally. And it's, I mean, just to ask, those APIs are fronted by a combination of microservices and other technologies that are, it, it's really, it, it's not, I mean, just to say, right, like we're not rebuilding a microservices platform and it's not like the, the secret is what's, you know, it's not microservices to the rescue. It's, you know, the platform now has amazing APIs that are fronted by technologies that are the best athletes for whatever their task is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, one of the reasons why I get upset about, you mentioned headless and microservices at the same time is that, when it comes to an API, the, the person consuming the API, they uh, they shouldn't care about what's right. behind it and what it's actually doing. So the microservices thing is much more on Commerce Cloud. We wanted to get the APIs out there and say, this is what the APIs are going to look like, and here's the new way to interact with them. And then from us on our side, behind the scenes, we can start to break things apart and create microservices. And, and, and people who have developed against the APIs on the other side don't really need to know that those are changing because we're changing them to make them more uh, uh, supportable for ourselves. Uh, not so much that they, you know, that customers who are consuming the APIs really care Absolutely. what's actually on the other side. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's sort of an artifact of how I think the the major vendors that entered the market had, who were headless first were also microservices, and I think really were like. Not only are these APIs really hot, but we've got this unbelievable technology behind the scenes, which is you know an equal to headless. But I think the reality is borne out that there there are a lot of paths to headless, and ultimately, yeah. if you're going with the SaaS vendor, it's the SaaS vendor's problem to make sure those APIs are responded at non time. Yep. Right? Like whatever yep, exactly. The is. Yep. Exactly. So if I'm a developer, right, and I want to like poke around and I want to see what some of these APIs are, like where would I go? Like what? How do I get started to sort of to begin to experience? Sort of the, the the breadth of the headless experience for yeah. Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Yeah, so, so that the, the interesting thing there is that when we started with the new APIs, we we got those going, and then we realized, hey, we're we're going to need some way to actually expose these to people so that they could see them and, and the public can get in and look at them. And so we started having some combinations conversations around doing that and what it would look like, uh, uh, you know, kind of middle year last year, and we worked with our partners in MuleSoft, um, and we've basically built out what we now call our Commerce Cloud Developer Center, which you can get to, you can go to developer.commercecloud.com, and it'll bring you right in there. It gives you a bunch of developer information related to not just headless, but starting to get some more 
developer information of our other technologies, but but definitely from a headless and API perspective, you can get in there. You can uh, there's a getting started guide for getting up and running. There is uh, a whole listing of the APIs. You can see all the details of the APIs, what the methods look like, what the types look like. There's a mocking service that's there, so you can send a request from the site to the mocking service and get a response back. Um, um, and then we have downloads available to get, we created a, a Node.js SDK for the SDA APIs. There's a sample application. Um, there's just a lot of tools there that you can pick up and start to use uh, and get moving if you have Commerce Cloud and, and move forward on just experimenting with the APIs and building things in a headless fashion. That's really great. So a low barrier to entry to, to at least experience it, to get a sense of what's going on and, and to play with those tools. Yep, correct. You know, I know that there's also a community aspect to it and that one of the goals of the, the Commerce Cloud Developer Center is to establish a place for developers to meet developers who are working on similar problems and, you know, share code and frankly move stuff forward. How has that been going? Uh, yeah, so that was one of the, the, the things we had at the beginning. So the, the CCDC, uh, as we called it, the Commerce Cloud Developer Center, it launched in February. And, and one of the things we had was that for each of the APIs and, and for the group as a whole, there's there are uh, discussion groups that are available. People can get in and ask questions and, and, uh, and, and the community can respond and put things in there. And actually, it's really started to take off over the last three or four months as we get more people involved and operating with the APIs and and just in using Commerce Cloud, B2C Commerce Cloud in general. So so yes, there's discussion groups that are there uh, available on a bunch of different topics. There's a discussion group under each of the APIs. Um, and then we also have our own uh, team members from product management and from our engineering teams that are in there also uh, looking at postings and responses and, and trying to give answers to things. But But also the community has really started jumping in. Uh, it's been great to see both customers and partners getting in there and giving responses and really starting to help each other out and answer questions that people have within there. And that's, uh, out of all the things, that's probably one of the biggest things that I'm kind of proud of that is kind of starting to pick up and, and take off. Um, so Because it really gives that sense of community and a place to go to ask questions when you have to. No, and I think that, you know, it's, I was. I think it's really great because you know I, I worked in software implementation for a long time and I, I've implemented a number of products. And one of the one of the difficulties you have is that you know I think the nature of enterprise software implementations are you're really sort of doing it in a silo. You have the experience of your past projects, but you may not have the like other people are solving the same problem you're solving in a bunch of different yeah. places in the same way. And it's rather than sort of searching the internet or hoping you'll come across somebody, having a place where you can go and you know that people are solving the same problems is. is just seems really valuable, particularly because everyone's the same technology. Everybody's solving, you know, everyone's got the same stuff. So yeah, yeah, it, exactly. I mean, there's there is there's nothing new in software, but somebody else has done something similar somewhere, and and hearing from other people and the experiences they've had always helps to be able to get you just a, a little bit of a jump start to get moving in the direction that you're trying to go. Yep, totally. So if 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 you want, if anyone wants to try it, do you have to be a Commerce Cloud customer? Or can I go to Commerce Cl or developer.commercecloud.com right now and sign up and, and see how it's going? Yeah, so you can get out there. The site itself is public. You don't you don't even have to sign in to like look through, browse through any of the APIs uh, to to post something into the discussion group. Yeah, you sign in. It's actually connected to Trailblazer ID. So if you've been on the Trailblazer site, then you actually already have a login to the CCDC, so you can get in there. Um, and that's just to ask questions. <clears throat> to use the APIs, you can use the mock service that's available uh, out in the CCDC right now um, and experiment with the APIs. To use the APIs against an actual B2C Commerce Cloud environment, you'd have to actually have a B2C Commerce Cloud environment. And then and that's pretty straightforward to enable it in those environments and start using them. That's outstanding. I think it's really, I mean, just speaking honestly, I think it's really great when a company gives people an opportunity to view it sort of behind the curtain before they make a purchase. You know, kick the tire, see what's in there, see if it's right for you. I think it, it shows that you know, this is a major area of investment for the company and we really care about it. So, yep, exactly. Awesome. Andrew, this has been a great conversation. I really want to thank you for taking the time to uh, talk to us about the CCDC. Sure, absolutely. Anytime. I'm happy to talk about it. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great day.